Heracross got some nice new treats from Gen 9. It gets access to Trailblaze to boost its speed by one stage, and with its base 85 speed after just one Trailblaze, this boy's running pretty fast. It can also use the loaded dice item, which guarantees that multi-hit moves hit at least four times. Now moves like Pin Missile become 125 power before stab, and coverage like Rock Blast along with Bullet Seed brings all new life to Heracross's arsenal. This thing can really get snowballing with its Moxie ability which gives it a plus one in attack after every single kill, and this fake Mega Heracross can be extremely fun. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are here with the greatest bug on a quest to unlock this thing's full potential. It's super fun in Gen 9 lately, and I just really enjoy this Pokemon. If you do as well, make sure to click that subscribe button, or else Heracross will absolutely eat your children, and these are just the rules. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so to start things off, my opponent is just going to straight up lead off with the Mimikyu. Now that... It's extremely scary, especially if your name is Donut. My, my Golem lead here does not really have a great position. And I can set up Stealth Rock, however, I'm not galvanized, so I can't really explode. I can't counter this thing, and I know this asshole wants to start dancing with some swords because, you know, starting to get some early pressure with a Swords Dance Mimikyu is extremely scary. Mostly just because you have to knock this thing's damn head off, break its neck before you can even do any damage to it. So, I decided to get out of there, and I'm actually going to switch into young Pinhead Larry. I can come in... Get a nice little Intimidate, knowing that this thing is going to Swords Dance. It's now just going to be sitting at plus one, which makes it a, a bit less scary here. So, I also know that I am going to be faster. I can at least go for a Bug Buzz here, which is going to break this thing's disguise. And that's going to be quite a relief, because now I do have Mons in the back that should be able to outspeed and hopefully take care of it. So, I do take a little bit of Life Orb Chip there. They decide to go for a second Swords Dance. They're going full, trying to get me on the back foot from the lead here. And this thing now sitting at the plus three attack is absolutely a problem. So at least I go for the air slash here, kind of thinking uh, that now they shadow sneak. However, I get some solid damage there and they actually decide to go for the play rough, which, you know, is going to take care of the masquerade. But realistically, I'm totally willing to trade the masquerade for being able to not get swept by early game fake ass Pikachu. So now I get to switch into whatever I like. So I am working with the max speed offensive tentacruel and the jelly do be quick as hell because i am just a few points faster than a max speed mimikyu and it seems that their best damage is going to be in the form of priority shadow sneak which we are barely able to live by the skin of our tentacles it does take some life orb chip here and that's going to allow us to poison job and finish off the mimikyu so that thing was about scary as hell but at least the good news is we're not getting swept from the turn one lead so now they get to open revenge switch into whatever they like and they decide to go into the iron hands and this thing is also pretty damn scary because there's a couple different directions this thing could take in terms of what it wants to do. So I'm thinking Tentacruel's kind of used up at this point. I can at least outspeed and go for that knockoff. It'll get rid of whatever item we see and kind of give us some intel on what it wants to do. It turns out I'm able to actually knock off a punching glove and then it goes right for a belly drum. So this thing is now sitting at plus six attack and with the punching glove it means it's, yeah, it's here for, to just click drain punch and be a damn menace. So at least, however, I can go for one poison jab before we go down, and he does finish me with that drain punch. So I'm getting set up on all over the damn place, and I gotta find a position to where I can set up myself up. So they do kill me with the drain punch, and it always seems to be whenever I bring Tentacruel with the clear body over Liquid Ooze, they go for draining moves, which is ridiculous, but at least this is gonna put me in a spot where now I can go back into Donut, and hey, this is actually a spot where I feel like I can do something here. So. I do want to prioritize getting up some Stealth Rock because I'm actually noticing that, you know, with the Cerebral Edge in the back, Heracross kind of has a solid matchup here. So if I can get some Stealth Rock and break some Sashes in the back, that's kind of what I want to do here. And also, knowing that uh, obviously I can take one attack, it knocks me down to my Sturdy here. The Drain Punch is a bit annoying because they do get some health back here. However, that does allow me to set up my Stealth Rock. And we're like, damn, this thing's old thick thighs over here is faster than me, and that's going to be a bad time. Is what I would say if that were the case. However, I am running the Custat Berry, of course. I can then eat the berry, allow me to go first, and then hit him with the classic. What the fuck? It's actually anticlimactic as hell because the explosion does in fact not kill the Iron Hands here. But it knocks it down to like 10 HP, and... He's going to drain punch the air for absolutely nothing. And now, 
you know, it's actually kind of good that that left that with the amount of HP it did because now we see an amazing opening for the absolute goat. I can now bring in the Heracross and it is absolutely go time, baby. We're gonna go ahead and blaze a trail here because I can easily outspeed, finish this thing off with a trail blaze and that is gonna give ourselves the nice little plus one speed that we need to be able to outspeed pretty much everything they have left. Now, not only that, but we also get the moxie boost. So. We get ourselves a nice convoluted ass dragon dance here as we're now sitting at plus one attack and speed. And now here comes a pretty big issue ordinarily to the Heracross. So while this does look like a bad matchup for the Heracross, this boy does not know that I in fact have a pocket full of rocks ready to throw at some bitches. So I can actually just go for that rock blast with our loaded dice. Of course it guarantees that it's gonna be able to knock this thing out. And even actually if I didn't have my stealth rock up, it uh, would have been in range for a kill, but also a focus sash doesn't save you from the multi-hit move. So that takes care of the center ledge who does look like their best answer to Heracross. It turns out it is no answer at all and we are able to get ourselves another moxie boot. So this now brings in the Snorlax. Of course, I do not however have a fighting move on this Heracross, but that is because after a few moxie boosts, the pin missile is actually insane. Check this out, I can go for the pin missile here and with our loaded dice, we ain't even gambling out here. Four hits is just enough to be able to take care of the Snorlax. And we even keep one in the chamber, baby. We pin missile all over the damn place out here. It feels like the days of the, the Mega Heracross times. And uh, we don't need any skill link, baby. We have the dice. So that takes care of a Snorlax and it's actually kind of hilarious to finish that thing off without even using my fighting stab. Um, but uh, they're kind of running out of, of options against the Heracross. They now go into uh, the Empoleon who well, I again don't have the fighting coverage to take this thing out. I do in fact have a damn gun. I can go for the neutral bullet seed hit and it looks like four hits should maybe be enough to take this thing out. There's always potential for the five. Um, but as you're gonna see here, this Empoleon, he is like damn 50 cent out here getting shot eight times and he does live with a sliver of HP. We are only able to hit four times, but the good news is even though they connect on a hydro pump from full, Heracross absolutely eats it. We just take a nice little mouthful of water at this point and we're feeling quenched and better than ever, to be honest. I can then just go for the bullet seed. It's 100% accurate, guarantees that the Empoleon goes down and uh, being at full HP to take that hydro pump was extremely clutch and uh, they are lucky that they hit it, but the Heracross does not give a shit. So we get ourselves another Moxie boost and at this point we've snowballed to a point where the Heracross is absolutely out of control. We are an absolute beast here, and their final Pokemon is gonna be the Golden Go. So, I actually do not have a super effective hit or even a neutral hit against this thing, of course, but with all the Moxie boosts that we do have, I just decide to go for the Bullet Seed. It's gonna do a lot of damage regardless, uh, while it might not take it out due to that Steel Typing, but they actually end up committing the Terra here. They're gonna go for the Terra Ghost. Now at this point they probably just click the button because it doesn't really matter at this point. I have a lot of Mons in the back to take care of the Golden Go. Uh, but that's actually amazing because uh, Heracross is now in a spot where Bullet Seed actually should be able to finish this thing off with no more steel. And uh, Buddy is absolutely in shambles seeing the true power of Heracross. In this situation that actually worked out amazing and not a better showcase to, to show what Heracross truly can do once you get that speed boost. So that is gonna be the end of the match. And uh, I thought that was just kind of a hilarious one to see Heracross do some shit that ordinarily is not able to really finish up a match like that. But that is going to be the end of the game. And I do want to thank you guys for all the support. If you do enjoy the videos, make sure to leave a like. And I did also want to give a shout out to my channel members. If you missed the announcement, I did open up uh, my channel members on YouTube here. If you click the join button below for $4.99 a month, I've decided to um, uh, multiple times a month upload kind of extra content where it's going to be a lot of extra battle videos if you're craving some more. But also I plan to do things like kind of behind the scenes looks at how I build my teams um, and maybe just kind of some tutorials. But if you're interested, hit that join button. But of course, it's definitely not required. It's just one way to support the channel if you're into it. Um, and as always, it won't change the regular content here, but it's just a one way that I kind of wanted to see if people would enjoy and get value from. So yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I will catch you next time. Peace out.